Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to the show, everyone. Yeah. So hey, fucker, happy. you like the Raiders? <laughs> What's up? Hey, fucker. Do you like the PPS, the poorly played stream? Hey, do you fucker. know Baby Laser? <laughs> you love fucking Garrett or Brian? Or Brian? Hey, let us know, huh? We're Los Tiny's boys. Do you like the Raiders, fucker? What's up, fuckers? Uh, welcome to the show. <laughs> Yo. Uh... Happy to have the ladies play us in there. What was that lyric? Uh, undefined ladies. What was that? What was it? In the in the chat, I uh, I'm looking back to see. And now, ladies and gentlemen of these United States, I present to you the poorly played stream. Oh. <laughs> but hugger, I should intro the show that way. That'd be great. Um, 
I would be more uh, presidential. I don't want to run for the office, but I should like kind of maybe fit the part. Yeah, you're old enough to. Uh, what is that age? Oh yeah, Derek's now old enough yeah. to be president. Yeah, that's right. It's 35. 35 years old. Yikes. I know. I'm probably better candidate yep. than uh, Bo Jiden. How about that? Oh, <laughs> I agree. Is he still a candidate? I don't know. Uh, how, how does that work? Well, technically, he's a candidate for re-election, I guess. Oh, uh, I guess. He could be a candidate for anything. He could be a candidate for um, uh, early on stage Alzheimer's, too. Could, I don't know. Oh, it could be. Some people would say. Let's go to the current game that I am playing. Oh, hell yeah. This is uh, something that I've been waiting to bring to the poorly played stream. Like a dragon, Yakuza 7. <laughs> I'm so, so used to uh, Kiryu. Uh, is that his name? I should yeah, be I Kiryu. should be better at it. But um, this is Ichi, Ichiban, uh, number one. This guy, new character, I'm totally already committed to his storyline. I love this guy. Rocco oh, talked yeah. about this a lot. Like, you fall in love with his family. Like, yeah. I can totally see this. This is this underdog hero. Everyone's rooting for him, you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, you're making friends. I'm kind of early on in the game. Uh, let's see. How many hours in am I? Four... No, 11. Uh, that's 11 a lot. Hours. That's yeah, a lot. Yeah, but that's... Yeah, that's this game is such a soap opera, I, for, I forget. That's early for a Yakuza game. Yeah. 10 hours in is when you finally, like, what? You've settled after the first, like, three chapters, four chapters? It's the first time it, like, opens all the way up. And yeah. Yeah, yeah. Three, four chapters. Yeah, I didn't even look at it. It says chapter four right there. Oh, okay. <laughs> chapter oh, four, man. 11 hours. It's um more so than the other games... I think because it's not like, oh, I have to know all this history because I didn't play Yakuza 3 and 2, you know? Yeah. And, and and I don't need to know that with this guy because it's just a brand new story. And yeah. so far, I'm not in Kamarocho, so that's like a nice change, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, a different location, you know? Yep. Yokohama. That That is another thing I didn't know about this game is uh, going going into it when uh, when Frank was playing it on Big Dogs. It, it wasn't... I didn't know that it wasn't in a different area or a different spot like that... That was cool to me. Um, yeah. And but, you definitely get to visit Camarocho. And yeah. You, you start there, you know, in the beginning of the game. Yeah. It, it's kind of, I mean, it's similar and mirrors <laughs> the uh, the same thing as uh, as Kiryu's story. You know, he goes he goes away. Yeah. Uh, he takes the blame. And he comes back. And he comes back. And, and I like he's that not really it. Yakuza anymore. But, and then he's he's wearing pretty much the same colors as, as yeah. Kiryu, just inverted. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, he wore a white suit with a red shirt underneath, and now he's wearing that. I have the DLC. I don't know where to put it on, but, like, there were all these alternate costumes. Oh. And there's a Kiryu costume. There's there's a bunch of shit. I, I want, like, a Fist of the North Star costume. That, that's pretty awesome. Uh, I honestly... What perverted. What do I care? What's cool about this game is that, like you said, it's going to allow people like yourself to be able to, uh, to get back or get into the Yakuza series because it doesn't carry the weight of the previous... However, what I've found out about it is, like, every Yakuza game really can stand on its own. Sure, yeah. I, and I've, I've felt that way when playing Yakuza 6 yeah. or 5 or 4. Like, I jumped in in the middle of the series. I think, yeah. uh, you know, the remake, Kiwami and Kiwami 2, uh, Zero even. You know, like, I bought all of these, but I haven't fucking really played any of them. Yeah. And then Sega actually, uh, I think probably how you got a lot of them the same way I did, was Sega actually gave us a lot of, uh, they gave us the remastered collection. Uh, oh, back in the day? Back in the oh, day, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah for PS4. Oh, why are yeah. they in the store? I was, oh. like, not prepared for what just happened. Oh, that yeah, that can that can happen sometimes. Okay. Um, I'm, like, stunned now. I was like, yeah. oh, one enemy came up to fight. Yeah, that's really weird. I fuck? wish I could control. I can control the camera, but you can't control the character. Yeah. Oh, now, I could go up against a level eleven. Probably. Now, did I, you notice that the uh, the commands on the screen are, are Sega? It says skills on the skills, etc. Guard. A. No, I never. That's so cool, Brian. I never saw that before. That's why I love Yakuza games. It's like any point you get into the series, there's going to be references. Either you get them or you don't, but they're there, and they're fun whenever you find them. Dude, that's fucking sick. Isn't it? All right, I'm going to actually attack. I love the fact this game is already such a casual soap opera of just watch these cutscenes. Yeah. 
and let the auto dialogue scroll past. Yeah. But the fact that it's an RPG now, it's super casual. Because, like, yeah, I'm going to go get a soda. I'll be right back. You know, you put the controller down and you can come back to this game at any time. Yeah. It's, and even in a fight. <laughs> it's kind of oh, insane I didn't that. that they made this game the way that they did. Like, because it wasn't going to be a uh, turn-based RPG originally. It was going to be a standard Yakuza game, and then they did that April, April Fools. Fools. Yeah, and that's it, so crazy. And people liked it. Now, again, this is what I love about Japan. They pay homage to each other. They love Dragon Quest games so much that they made this it really like is crazy. a Dragon Quest game. It is crazy how much they reference it, talk about it, your class of hero, and just Ichiban's, like, you know, otaku-type fascination with that franchise. Yeah. I, as a gamer, relate to it because I know I'm fucking obsessive about a few different franchises. Oh, missed my save or my uh, perfect dodge. Uh, but the the game coming out in this new fighting style, I I, I think I like it better because I was really? never a brawler fan. Really, okay. not a fan of brawlers. Okay, and, and um, you know. This, I, I, I love JRPGs, though, and I don't play many anymore because I'm afraid of the length. Right. But I'm already here, you know what I mean? And like, that I tried the new Dragon Quest, and I thought to myself, I'm glad they're giving us a free demo on Switch because there's no way I'm buying and playing a full fucking JRPG right now in my life. Yeah. I just knew it was like, I'm not going to play Dragon Quest Eleven. Yeah. Or whatever the last one was. And it was beautiful. Yeah. The demo was awesome. Rocco finished it and loved it. A lot um, of people loved it, yeah. He told me all about it, but tried to get me in, and I just I couldn't do it. Heavy beatdown. Okay, let's go. I didn't realize, but uh, Reckless Charge will hit multiple enemies. Yeah. So if I can line it up right. So again, like, even Eric, who doesn't play any RPGs, like, really at all anymore, he used to play them when he, you know, when he was younger. Lo loved, got into the Yakuza series because I, I pushed him, uh, and so did Ray. Ray was also getting into just all the Yakuza games, and then he got to this one, and he didn't know if he was going to like it, and he said the same thing as you. It ended up being one of his favorites because yeah. it was just, it's so goofy and wacky and fun. <laughs> it leads it leans into its own schlock, but it also has, that, like you said, that soap opera narrative that keeps you coming back for more. Definitely. This uh, PS5 version, too, looks extra nice. Yeah. Um, the version I waited for uh, was this PS5 version. I'm, I'm glad I did. I had plenty to play at the time Yeah. when the PS5 launched, so uh, I wasn't going to go back to the PS4 version. And I was jealous of everyone playing it because it was like, oh, this looks so fun. But now it's fucking my turn. Finally. Hey, yeah. Hey, hey guys. Do you like Los Tiny's boys? I do. Do you know Baby Laser? <laughs> Hey guys, do you know Baby Laser? I do. Hey guys. I hey like guys. I know Baby Laser. It's do you know sword. Baby Laser? Hey guys. Hey guys. Do you know Baby Laser? Yeah. Is there anyone jacking off to this? Is there anyone jacking off to this right now? No. Brian, Brian does. No. Brian does. Uh uh. Hand check. <laughs> nah. If you think that's what jerking off is, I feel, I feel sorry, sorry for, for you, you, bro. <laughs> 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 We say that to each other, like Sean and I say that to each other all the fucking oh, time. Oh, it is. I mean, <laughs> yesterday it, we did that. It's a f that whole thing is a feature on the big dogs, like all the oh, time. Oh, that guy, that video. Oh, you play that video? We play. We have a drop of the whole thing. Oh, really? Yeah. Of uh, like on our on our stream deck, we use it as a soundboard. That's sick. So when someone donates or whatever. Oh, just know every so often, like if you just if, hit it. it. Like if we get a character, like you know how sometimes if you uh, on Super Nintendo. If you're playing Zelda and you grab the wall, it looks like he's jerking off. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so then you just hit that button. I caught you, man. I wasn't. Caught you, man. I wasn't jerking off. Wasn't jerking off. Camera say different. Is that uh, a Walmart? Uh, No, it's actually not a Walmart. He was wearing blue, and that's why people thought it was, but it's uh, some other store. I don't know what it is. It's like a Walgreens. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't. wasn't. Cameras say different. Well, I don't care what your cameras say. I wasn't jerking off. I wasn't jerking off. <laughs> hey, all right, but look, look. And then it just cuts. That's, the, that's it? What was he going to say next? That's I think all. he was going to show him the video. Look. Oh. Look. This is you with your dick in your hand. I thought he was going to give him, like, an <laughs> ultimatum. Like, here, I'm going to put this video on YouTube or... You jerk me off. Oh, wow. i be the Tit lunch. for chat. Yeah, a little bit of, I take you out for lunch, and I'm the lunch. A little pull you, pull me. Oh, yeah. I'm into that. Dicky trick, you know that. 
Uh, I find myself, like, dying a lot, and I don't, I can't find a fucking convenience store to deposit my cash in. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. so I'm kind of trying to avoid people, uh, because that guy, like, that guy who I thought was, like, this is an even match, uh, sometimes I'll just get my fucking ass kicked by one dude that's, like, a level 11. Or, really? like, if those four dudes over across the street are, like, level 13, they'll s just, like, nine out of ten times I'll get them, but every once in a while they'll just smack me, and I'm fucking dead half your money's gone so if you deposit it it's safe but i can't find a fucking where's a 7-eleven what do they have there what are you looking for the the, the M convenience store pull up your legend i'm looking right now where's the legend uh square or trying location list oh then you can tab up what's with... it called where the atm is uh i don't know what it is in this case i've only David. heard about it but i don't know how to do it See, I don't think I've unlocked it. Do R1. You can tab over. Oh. Okay. So Zang. Like... Using Tang. Kinka so, Pharmacy. Yeah. Specialty Store. Yun's Foods. Welcome Pharmacy. It's not in the pharmacy. I already tried that. No. It's at Bonasana. the Popo. There's one right above the homeless camp. Oh, okay. A save point or an ATM? Yeah. So what... Where's my old ass homeless camp? I'm out of there now. I'm, I'm living in an apartment. Who is that? You can probably do it in your apartment. Hello, Kitty? I don't know where my apartment is right now. <laughs> I don't know how to get back there. Oh, man. I'm the just... green heart is what somebody just said in the chat. So on the bottom. Oh, yeah. there. Way there over there. Go. I there love that go. you can set waypoints. Yeah, if a you... game has waypoints, it's like I'm likely to beat it. I can actually find things. I get lost in games all the time. They didn't used to have a GPS in, in the other Yakuza games. They would, they would put a waypoint, but they wouldn't draw it on the map on oh that there. would get confusing yeah yeah well i mean the map is so small so it's not that you know it's not that bad what this is a, a prime example of i don't want to say the opposite of gta because i do like gta's world um but the opposite where they pack so much into a stage rather than having a big sprawled out space you know that is that's what i like about yakuza games there's depth in in all of these places where you want to explore every Every part of it and every aspect of it. There's all kinds of like, yeah, it's little side missions and stuff in every nook and cranny. Yeah. I uh. <laughs> oh, you got it. You're going the wrong way now. I, I'm. I. Oh, I'm following the fucking pink. Oh yeah, I didn't, I didn't even see the pink. Wrong waypoint. Ah, oh, there's guys down there too, though. Can we take them? Ooh, what does uh, she have? For I would us? say give it a shot. Yeah, see, I, but that's the thing, right? Like you can like. Come and talk to people and hear what they got to say. Oh, Soup Kitchen hooked us up. Yeah, that means you'll be able to have uh, some health. Did we get... Well, I, mine didn't go up at all. Oh, no, it's like an item. It's a healing item, right? Oh, maybe. Okay, it's an item. All right. Your first item is an item. Let's see. Oh, they're 9 and 10. I got this. I got yeah. this with just attacks. And uh, Oh, so you start off with this dude. You like this guy first? Well, no. I don't know if I did that. On, I, it just sometimes. Does. Oh, okay. Or did I do that? I don't know, actually. I've never I, I've never actually gotten hands-on to the combat in this game. Uh, and Frank always avoided random encounters when we were playing, so... Which is good, because I never got to really see... I See, I love grinding, so I've just been getting into fights. That's why I keep losing my money. Yeah, no, and, and, and so do I. Normally, that's, that's what I do, too. But because he was streaming it, he didn't want to just be grinding, because he was worried about, you know, like, it being entertaining. But I, for me, it's cool. That means oh, you want to see the fight, though? I that, don't know. I, I, I mean... Uh, I think I have a party here, but I don't know how I edit who goes first. I mean, one, two, and three. I think his stats just allow him his speed or yeah, something. Yeah, he might go have first. faster speed. Because sometimes the enemies attack first, too. Oh, but when I. Do I not have the right job? Check jobs. Yeah, I'm a hero. Freelancer, I got that no, no neckerchief. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I just took on this job. I hope we can chain Namba's poor. Dirty bum sweatpants soon. Uh, I like his getup. Let's see. It's hard to beat how much I love the Yakuza 6. Yeah. Because Beat Takashi, the director and actor and comedian, was in it as oh, a really? character. Oh, yeah, yeah. They like right. scanned his ass in. Like the old man Yakuza yeah. that you guys lived with. Yeah. Well, I never played. Uh, Seven or six? Yeah, I saw. I haven't gotten that far. I'm playing three, but uh, it, it's not going to give up too much if you want to talk about it. I don't care. 
I'll forget. No, I don't it. remember. I didn't get. I got the farthest in uh, six of any Yakuza game that I ever played. Okay. But I probably still only got like I don't know. Twenty hours, which isn't even halfway. Yeah. Well, it depends if it's taking yeah. care of that baby though. I was I was committed. Oh, oh okay, man. yeah. I uh I really liked. Um, I've been playing. I beat two Kiwami. And I beat, and I played half of uh, Zero, and I watched the rest of it with Frank uh -huh. when he when he played it. Um, and then one was recapped all in the beginning of Kiwami. Like they they walk you through all the cutscenes, they talk you through it. So I'll, I'll probably never go back and play one. Uh, three, I'm about halfway through, and I and I and I really like it. Uh, but this is the one that I'm really That's not looking an forward to. This one is. Yeah, this six and this are, are the two I'm really looking forward to. And then I play, I, I played and beat Judgment. And Judgment, fucking rules. Judgment was you played a lot of Judgment. Yeah, you, I beat you're it. the one that I know that played the most. Yeah, yeah. Now it's got a PS5, I think, upgrade. So if you if you did get what one of those from the pack that uh, we got from again, Sega sent us a, a bunch of uh, copies. But um, yeah, if you get if you ended up having that, I think you can get a free upgrade to the PS5 edition and play that at some point if you want. I mean, I got too many games constantly coming out, so going back on stuff that I didn't already buy is is hard for me. That, Especially I if I get given games like like we said, you know, it's almost a, a detriment if Sega send us the codes to play, you know, that Yakuza. Uh, remaster collection. Yeah, I got the code, but it's like I didn't buy this, and I have other games I bought, <laughs> and I'm not gonna get to this free game. Yeah, but seven, I paid sixty bucks for, <laughs> so I'm like, look, I have to fucking get my money's worth, and like, I'm I'm playing it. You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, that, no, so that this, makes sense. Yeah. This was a recover station. This wasn't an ATM. They're saying that um, there should be in the convenience store north of here. That's a game. That's Shogi, Shogi Highway. Is there a convenience store? They said north of here. Yeah, where's the popo? There is, is something. Yeah. Popo! Okay, there you go. new waypoint. I always do that click in. Which I like that there's first person. It makes me want to try this with a VR headset. Oh, yeah. I mean, I Playing sometimes. This, like, in, this, in this view? Sometimes I play the game like this just because it's, it's more fun. Oh. Do I want to buy some boss coffee? No. No, they don't feature actor. Uh, to uh, Tommy Lee. What's the fucking old guy's name? Tommy Lee Jones. Yeah. There's the ATM. There it is. Get out of the Excuse way, me. <laughs> Hip check. Fucking. Shoulder. I love that. Yeah. I Let's also. I all. love. I love this whole game. I love everything about like the series. It's so fucking fun. It's just yeah. It's just a laugh riot. They have fun with their shit. I'm gonna deposit it all now. Yeah. Why not? No fucking repercussions i can go out and battle some fools man this looks really good on uh ps5 i mean it looked good on ps4 but the resolution and the uh and the frame rate i can tell like just the lighting effects I yeah mean, fucking... the... oh look at this group right oh, hey homies you yo you like the fucking oh, yeah. ranty rose I, I always describe yakuza games as uh getting getting uh getting to go to sega Sega's own Japan amusement park. And then they give you a bag of tokens that says free play, or a card that just says free play, and you get to play all the games that you want in this world. <laughs> That's how I feel. It's the biggest Sega Japan amusement park, and you're just given a free pass to do whatever you want. Man. Yeah, to me, they're just, they're very, um, uh, it's, I love, it's interesting, because it's like, the story and everything is a soap opera about the Yakuza, which is a very defined genre in Japanese film, yeah. but not so popular of a genre here. Right. So the weeaboo in me who loves Yakuza movies, like beat Takashi stuff, yeah. is all over like this fucking soap opera action. But then the other side of it is like, yeah, you get to walk around in a very realistic Japanese Man. city. And I love that. It just speaks to my weeb nature in so many levels. Yeah. Uh, and then the gameplay is now a JRPG, so I'm like fucking tooting my own horn. No, that's it's... not it. <laughs> a three charge. One, two, three for me. Uh, it's it's graphics for me, uh, but the graphics in Tokyo and just getting to see the city and all the fucking neon. The JRPG element, and then the fact that it's a Yakuza story. I like it. 
I love, yeah, because I don't know a lot of Yakuza movies. I'm not super, super familiar with them, but. You uh, know what my favorite is? Yeah. You want a recommendation? Yeah. Yeah, I'll yeah, let you I'm finish your thought, though. Sorry, I keep oh, no, stepping I just, on you. Uh, I just, I really appreciate the, uh, I, I get what they're, I get what they're about from, from what they do in, in the, in the games. Like, I get, yeah. I get the, this idea of honor and, like, Yakuza isn't like, here it's not like a mafia movie where it's in, kind of inherently bad. Yakuza are kind of a little different in Japan. Like, there are the wild child Yakuza. But it's also like this honorable kind of samurai shogun thing of like what the duty is to your... They talk a lot about the gray area of law too that they operate yeah. in in these games. And that is kind of like, um, you know, the citizenry don't really look upon them as a kind of uh, Italian family style mafia of yeah. gangsters that are bad for the putting drugs into the whatever. It's like, I think that Yakuza goes through and like pays people in the community and they like that yeah and there's the other sides of it too i mean it's all it's it's a yin and the yang it's i mean yeah it's it's kind of like a localized government thing it's it's a weird thing but yeah but there is some there's the pageantry of it and the aesthetic of it it's like uh it's very interesting yeah it's an interesting subculture yeah absolutely that's based you know it's a it's a it's not based on reality i mean it's uh, it still exists today. It's reality. Yeah. There is a yakuza. It's a heightened form of realism that runs certain things <laughs> in Japan, yeah. namely the uh, mixed martial arts uh, pride events, as well. From what I've heard. What the fuck? Where they would give you a contract and tell you, uh, "We do not test for supplements." Understand? <laughs> yeah. Fi- they would hire all the American fighters like Bob Sapp to go yeah. over there. Oh, those, Bob Sapp. Those made old money. pride events. I didn't know watching all those on DirecTV back in the day. But <laughs> hearing interviews and hearing guys on Rogan talk about. <laughs> we went over to Japan and they handed us a contract and said, hey, we do not test for supplements. Yeah. Understand? Sure. Got it, boss. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's all fucking. Don't walk that's all away Yakuza from me when uh, I'm money, to you. apparently. Oh, okay. I mean, that makes Funding sense. Funding and putting on those events. Yeah, yeah the, those are huge money pools. Wherever yeah, there is up. money and a gray area, I guess. Well, that's not even a gray area. It's just so dicey. Yeah. It's like, who wants to be involved in cage fighting with testosterone monsters? Ah. Uh, not our athletics commission. <laughs> Let's give it to the Olympic Games. No, they don't want it either. Fuck. Nope. <laughs> All right. Give it to the Yamagama Gucci clan or whatever. <laughs> see what they're up to. We'll see. I think that's how it goes. Pro- I mean, I don't know. I've never been there, so. <laughs> According to all the beat movies. No, the, the best movies, in my opinion, I think the best starter movie coming from an American uh, is a movie called Brother. Brother. Where uh, the main character gets kicked out of his Yakuza family, and him and his brother are sent to America. They're oh. like they're like excommunicated, but they hook up with some gangsters out in Los Angeles and like start this hybrid American, like think of like Crip and Blood type yeah. gangbangers and Yakuza like get together that's like kind of the premise and then they start a new family in fucking downtown los angeles so it's the best of both worlds it's this gritty crime drama in downtown la and then there's all the stuff taking place in japan too that's really cool brother is fucking brother great. okay um directed by takashi katano that's beat takashi is all the guy's name okay but he was also the dude on that takashi's castle which was the mxc show yeah it was like that obstacle course thing yeah dude's been like a famous actor that's what i thought when you forever. said his name i'm like fucking mxc dude and huge. it's like yeah, yeah, huge, yeah. huge japanese scanned actor. into yakuza 6 main character in hell yakuza yeah 6. um that's that's one of my favorites i'm trying to think of some other all of his i really like all okay of his, all of his movies Brother, all right. I'm gonna have to remember that one. I'll let Brother. you borrow it. It's hard to find. I don't know if it's streaming anywhere or anything, but I got a DVD, bro. Okay. Oh yeah, I still have to watch that uh, Yakuza movie that somebody sent us. I don't even know what I'm doing. What am I? Oh yeah, I need yeah, to like, like fight. Stuff. I got one guy. He's only level 12. Let's just fucking attack. Yeah. You can beat his ass. <laughs> one hit left as I sat and talked about. <laughs> That's fine. 
how I think the Japanese handle <laughs> mixed martial arts. Hey, this guy fucking leveled up. He looks like a boss. All right, Namba. Your back's hurting. You need a stretch. Fuck yeah. We deposited our money. Let's go find. Uh, let's go find ourselves. Ooh, look at the Ferris wheel down there. Maybe we can find ourselves a side mission by exploring an uh, unknown area. This area up ahead is still the fog of war. It's still grayed out. Let's see. Tell us neighborhood Jio Jumajumi. I want a peaceful place to nap. You'll be lucky to find it. Park. All right. He's just giving me info. Oh. What's going on here? Bike parking? Oh, uh, now nah, this looks like some fucking Final Fantasy yeah. playground. <laughs> Ding, ding, ding. Is this, a, is this a type of Japanese playground uh, architecture? Maybe. I could understand like this being just a thing kids would run up and down and play on. Yeah. But I've never seen this in America. No. I've seen weird shit. I've seen a lot of weird shit. Like weird playground architecture, but that's <laughs> just a like a spherical pyramid? Yeah. All right. Nerve I mean, headquarters. Oh, people just this? run up it. Kakarosh. You fucking kakarosh. Hey, look at that guy over there. He's gonna stick his tongue out at that girl. Watch this, watch this. He's gonna smack him in the face. You cockroach. Hey, baby, you wanna get some ice cream? You're a tiger, you belong to me. Cause your husband is dead. All right, oh, Michelle man. Pfeiffer in that movie is too thin, but it's insane. Cocaine. Her, her body is insane. Miami and cocaine. Oh my God. It's insane in that movie. It's like, holy shit. She was the epitome of the fucking hottest girl during that time period, you know? Michelle Pfeiffer was, was it, it, dude. That, and then she fucking did. To quote uh, Garth. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, that and fucking, she was, in, she was Catwoman. Oh, the best is the best role, the, I think, most like perverted my child mind ever <laughs> went. I got a thing for latex now, I will admit. So I think we all did growing up in the 90s, uh, man. But yeah. That movie. But that movie did something, and Michelle yeah. Pfeiffer did something in that fucking literal oh, cat suit. Dude, that and Aeon Flux or whatever that shit was, like all, all that yellow, all that you know, all that leather and fucking vinyl. latex and vinyl. The vinyl thing, man. Fucking is, watching <laughs> movies like Blade and seeing that like skin type. I mean, skin well, type yeah. is meant to be just their fucking body. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The um, Underworld franchise, yep. too, didn't hurt. Pervert. Yeah. Pervert. Oh, oh man. Oh, man. Yeah, they, they I mean, but... Same with the guys. They had the latex asses on the Batman suits and all that shit. Well, I wasn't so. looking at that, man. That's what I'm just saying. The, girl, the girls got their own horny corner, too. Oh, well, that's yeah. Oh, that's yeah. That's not yeah, monopolize yeah. the horny. Well, for, for those that want to look at the male physique, yeah, you had uh, nipples on the bat suits. Yeah, and cod pieces the size oh of a fucking uh, butternut squash. Look at that squash. Oof. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm fucking see that. It's going to make my insides spaghetti squash. Boom. Boom. Get butterflies looking at those images. Chris Evans and his tight, tight Captain America uniform. Yeah, that's America's ass. Ooh, all the Marvel stuff is uh, pretty form fitting. <laughs> oh man, actually, you know they, what? they've been pretty good about not having it be like a sexualized form fitting thing. Like I was super happy. You With watched the women Wanda. characters. Yeah, like you watched Wanda, right? Yeah, yeah, WandaVision was good. Like I, I just finished uh, Falcon and oh. the Winter Snowman. Dude, let's uh, let's talk about that in a second because I, I want to see what she thought about it. But, but real quick, I did. I love the way that uh, that they dressed the characters in that show. Like when when Wanda needed to look elegant, it was elegant and dressed well, not elegant and like slutty sexy. When she, you know, when she was around, she wore like regular clothes and looked like a normal human. Granted, it was also because it was the whole sitcom feel and that kind of thing. Yeah. But I just love that they don't, like... I feel like even 15 years ago, they would have just over-sexualized the characters uh, like like they've done in the past. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, it's interesting. You know, it's it's Disney now. But, yeah. Uh, you know, forever, comic book movies were female-sexualized, really, with those costumes. Um, I'm trying to think back to, like, 90s. Like... I don't know, it was Barb Wire. That's the most extreme example I'm thinking of. She wasn't a superhero, but I just feel like that 90s vibe of like big boobs and cleavage in the costume, you don't see that in like any of the Marvel movies. Not no. even really the early. Were there any female suits in the early Iron Man or like. No. 
Hulk or any. No, there was first real female superheroes from the Avengers were what? Who got their own movie? Like Captain. Technically, it would have been, I guess, Miss Black Marvel? Widow. Black Widow would have been Less in there. Less shit ain't even out yet. No, no, no. I mean, I, I'm just saying back in the day, it, I was answering your first question where you said in the first Iron Man Marvel movies, the only one would have been Black oh, right. Widow. But even Scarlett hers, Johansson. it wasn't meant to make it look like over-sexualized. It was just like even though she's a character. She plays that sexy spy yeah. uh, role in certain scenes. Was there? I think there is a scene where she's like in a in a revealing little number, you know, some kind of like mini dress. Or yeah, but then she uses. But her, that's her being an agent. And, you know? and then, in, even in any of those moments, she always used her sexiness or sexuality to pervert a guy or pervert the situation in the, in their favor. You know, like knowing that Tony Stark is a womanizer, she uses her feminine wiles to get in and get the. What does a pepper hire? Tony. Pepper hires her. She though. does, but she also, you know, kind Tony. Of, says it's okay that he did that. Yeah, yeah like you can he, tell. He definitely likes the fact that he, she got hired. Yeah. And so, I, again, I, what I like about the whole series, and including, now we'll set perfect segue into Falcon and Winter Snowman, uh, which I like as a better name for that <laughs> series. Um, but, dude, yeah, that, uh, the characters in there as well, like Carly uh, Morgenthau and the agent, um, uh, What's her name? I can't even well, call her Becky Carter, but Blonde? Peggy, Peggy Carter. She she showed up in the early Marvel movies, right? Yeah, she was she was there. Uh, she kisses she was on Shield. Yeah, and, and she makes out with um with Captain America in one of the Avenger movies. Oh, cause she kind of worked with Nick Fury yeah. on the Shield stuff until yeah. until Shield was all revealed to be corrupted by Hydra. Right. Then she bounced, and I love that they set. They set stuff in that Falcon Winter Soldier movie sure. in Madripoor. Dude. I was so fucking stoked. Right? And it's as little as a thing like that. Like, yo, Wolverine always did shit down in Ma Madripoor. That's some, like, deep Marvel location that isn't really uh, Avengers-centric. Mm -hmm. So the fact that they used other Marvel Universe locations, I was like, this is sick. Right? That so, was that was fucking cool. So this is why <laughs> I was so eager for you to get to it, and I know. I, I mean, obviously, my when I say that, I'm always like, whenever you get to it, I'm 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 a floodgate wet, ready to talk about it, not not in the pressure way. But why I was so excited is you're the only one I know who's actually read and sat down, like personally know, who's read that much Marvel shit. That yeah, isn't just I mean it's you. mostly X Men universe or or specifically Wolverine. Yeah, like I know you read those, but. You, You've also, in the fucking 40 years, 30 years that you've been re uh, from the from the source material that you've been reading, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you know that universe well, either from the experiences read inside of the X-Men or from how it branch branched out and you read the larger story arcs. Sure. So what I fucking love about this is that they've done exactly what I wished Star Wars would do. We know Luke, we know Han, we know Leia, we know all the fucking people from the first trilogy, right? Yeah. What I wanted in these next movies, what I want from Star Wars is what The Mandalorian is delivering, and what I want from fucking Marvel is what they're doing right now. There's a million different places, worlds, and characters that you haven't seen yet in oh, Marvel. Like, Baron, uh, like fleshing out Baron Zemo? Right! That was, I remember, because I collected all the fucking Fleer cards. The yes. nine, Fleer 95 yeah. and 98 cards. So you'd get all those obscure characters like, yo, I got a Baron Zemo. This guy's got a purple hood on. I have that, the, the ones that you put together on a page, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. The back of them would be the big mural of all the X-Men. Yeah, and they'd have their fucking stats so on, sick. on the yes. back of I, I have them somewhere in a fucking That's, box. That was another cool thing in Last of Us as a collectible. Yeah. That was like such a throwback to, oh, I collect your cards just like this. Exactly. I mean. But uh, but yeah, that's where I know like Baron Zemo from. Like I've never read a comic with Baron Zemo, in it, but I had that card. So it's cool they're pulling out these B-list characters to flesh them out. And that guy was in all those, you know, Avengers movies. Yeah. And the Civil War movies. Yeah. But I didn't know he was a fucking... They were using a dude's real name that was like an actual known character. Yeah, like that that was a that was a great thing like again they brought all of these characters in in an authentic way that doesn't make you feel like they they fucking crowbarred them into the story, but rather made them feel like hey, here's somebody you didn't know about. The way that I always describe this and I probably said it here on the on the show, but the best example using Star Wars again is when they meet at, uh, at the beginning of A New Hope inside of Mos Eisley, yeah. Cantina, they're talking about how fast the Millennium Falcon completed the, the Kessel Run. Eight parsecs? Yeah. 
12? Well, it, 12. They don't, they, they, yeah, 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 whatever it is. But what I love about it is he, they ask, is the ship fast? And he's like, it made the Kessel run in 12 parsecs. Yeah. They don't elaborate. You just know that's because fast. they know that's fast. And so what the, what this does is it, it, what Marvel has done, and especially with Captain, uh, with the fucking Winter Soldier and uh, and then Snowman or whatever Falcon. it's called, Falcon and Winter Soldier, they fucking included all of those in there and authentically showed you who they were. You know, there you open up and you find out who Zemo is. They 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 open the dossier on him and you learn his history. Yeah. Same thing with with Sherry. And he's rich. He's like a baron. He's really a fucking baron. Yeah. Like he's just wealthy and. The, <laughs> His, him having a butler that he, like, <laughs> his butler is, like, undyingly devoted to him yes. is great. Like, it's like, yeah, this is, like, some, this is the Zemo family's Alfred. He's just down to be, you know, helping this crime family yeah. maintain a, a, a place on top. Yeah. Ooh, and, yes. and then, again, uh, what they do, because it's Disney, is they, they fucking lock down casting. I am so happy with every single person they cast. I mean, well, I shouldn't say happy. Every single person they cast turns out a good performance for that character. So yeah. I love the, I forget his name right now, which sucks, is that actor who played uh, Baron Zemo. Was, he was also an Inglorious Bastard. I've never, he was? Yeah, he was the guy who was the, the German soldier who, who shot, who did the movie, the whole the whole thing at the end. Oh, you're right. He yeah. was in that terrible movie, that yeah. propaganda film. I forgot. I was like, this guy looks familiar, but I, wow, okay. Yeah. Homie worked with Tarantino, that's great. Right, so like. I'm gonna um, take a power nap. This is my fun, this is, I think, the funniest animation I've seen in the game so far. <laughs> he scratches his <laughs> butt while he I like that he lays down cardboard. <laughs> On cardboard, yeah. Frederick Zolar, thank you, thank you. That's, yeah, that's, that's the guy's guy. name? Oh, cool. Yeah, great Thanks, actor. Chat. Thank you so much, uh, Akiba Roman. But yeah, dude, US agent. That, yeah. that character, fucking uh, Wyatt Russell, which, by the way, uh, for me, th here's another instance. That was a good, yeah, I didn't know this was going to be a whole, like, hey, there's a new cap because they passed the shield to this guy. Yeah. I didn't know that going in, and I thought that was a cool angle. I thought that was a cool angle. I, I, I hate his face. I hated his face. I hated and that was good. It. Yeah. That, you, were, <laughs> you weren't you were supposed to like him, and you, you weren't knew supposed it. to like his costume, I don't think. Oh, see, I love the U.S. agent. Uh, well, so. I like the U.S. agent colors. Yes. I didn't like his helmet in blue and red and white. Yeah. And it was like... It, it was like Who's this fucking dork cosplaying as Captain America? It's like, I, but I think you were intended to not like that shit. And then the U.S. agent costume is cool. That yeah. is that is fucking cool looking. Yeah, I think I think he's fucking awesome. Like, well, it's setting up like that that gray area X Force for the yep. X Men type thing. Yeah, and this is gonna be like Agents of Shield, which the comic series in the early 2000s was all about like Spider Man and this guy and this guy all going out and doing like bad missions yeah so killing the, motherfuckers yeah <laughs> under so, the radar right so uh, like my and and then we had uh, uh what's her name uh julia louis dreyfus playing vicky christina that was Barcelona. great out of nowhere too yeah dude they they said they had to they had to sneak her in under a blanket so that people wouldn't know that she was gonna play vicky christina barcelona like that shit fucking like i had no clue i'm like who is this what, why, what character See, I'm not, is she? Yeah, I'm not familiar with that character. Who is that character? Uh, she's some, I guess, kind of like worked with Nick Fury back in the day when they formed S.H.I.E.L.D. So it's exactly what you're saying. It's the whole Thunder Force or, uh, uh, you know, that whole... She's like an... Okay, she's she's like the Nick Fury for this, uh, yeah. this, this team that's ready to do a little wet work. Yeah, but that slightly turned, you know, version of them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I fucking loved... I love that character. I love what they did with the uh, with Wyatt Russell. Now, my, we were talking about this during WandaVision. You didn't know that Elizabeth Olsen was related to the Olsen twins. Well, you know, not not until like halfway through that watching that series. So yeah. halfway through that series, I found out that Wyatt Russell is Kurt Russell's son. Oh. oh. The guy, the shitty Captain America is Kurt Russell's That's son. That's Kurt Russell's son. It's so fucking weird, Brian. At the same time as I'm watching Captain Falcon and the Winter uh, Snowman. Yeah. I'm watching Hateful Eight Extended Edition again, and I'm fucking like, I have, that's his son? That's Wyatt Russell. That's Kurt Russell's son. I have no fucking clue. The whole time I'm watching this guy, I'm like, 
Why does this fucking dude look familiar as fuck? He doesn't look fuck. like Kurt or Goldie Hawn, though. Is when, Goldie Hawn and, and Kurt, right? Or is it a previous marriage? It, no, it's, yeah, it's them. It's their kids. Holy yeah. shit. Yeah. Because I, I hate his face in the show I'm watching, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, but I love, more than anyone, Kurt Russell's character in Hateful Eight. And I just keep... <laughs> How fucking weird. I'm literally watching those, like, back-to-back. -back. Like, yeah. I watch an episode of each a night. That's that's hilarious, dude. Like, um, But I'm still on the Hateful Eight. That thing is fucking long. Hateful Eight is... Extended, though? It's in Ooh. it's in chapters? It's yeah. so good that way. It's so good. I love that movie. I've seen that movie, like, five times. I think... It, again, I, when it comes to Quentin Tarantino movies, every one of his movies is good. It's whether or not you like it. That's, like, that's how it, that's how it goes. <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> Quentin Tarantino movies, yeah, they have a, a, a soft spot in my heart. Yeah. Because, man, I was obsessed with a few of them when I was, like, in high school. Right. But I think he's consistently delivered. And Hateful Eight, where it's like, wow, this is like, he's going so far away from any genre that I'm interested in. I'm not interested in Westerns. Oh, yeah. But this movie is so fucking good. The dialogue, like Tarantino films, is written so good. And the all-star cast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, dude, um, so fucking good. With, with that movie, yeah, that was more of like a that was a murder mystery. That was like yeah. one of those like whodunits, and, totally. And in the style of an old school movie where it's all on one set, you know, like a 1950s, yeah. 60s studio Super picture. Super wide. I loved it though, the right? Way like, they, the way they talk though, and everything, and and I, I, I'm just like, dude, I love it. It's so funny too. So much of it is hilarious. Uh, intentionally, you mm -hmm. know. Hey, oh yeah, like oh, like bar one, mama. One of the things, that, yeah, there's always a bar mama somewhere. Uh, one of the things I was going to ask you was, watching that, uh, did you get to the part where um, Samuel Jackson talks about uh, what he did, what he did when people came to chase him? Yeah. Okay. With that part in that movie, I've never wanted to somebody. To he had say a bounty the word. on his head. Yeah. Yeah. If people were coming to get that bounty. Yeah, and and so he knew. Get some he, well, again, like, I don't want to say too much, but I love that whole monologue he has because the whole time I'm like, just please say the word dick. Just please say the word dick. Dick. Say penis because he's talking about what he's gonna, what he did to that to one of the people oh, who, yeah. who came to find him, and he just belabors and belabors, and you expect him to say it. He even says the word you dingus. <laughs> yeah, he does say dingus. <laughs> and you're like, you say you dick. Take him us. Oh, uh, uh, see, Butthugger knew. Awesome. Fucking. I, uh, love, I love the whole Tim Roth explanation of why civilized justice is different than frontier justice. Yeah. And he, he goes through the whole oh, thing sorry. about explaining now, and if those men took you out and hung you on a tree, yeah. and, uh, while very satisfying, you know, and, and he goes through in his stupid English personification, yep. you know, and he's just. Uh, that whole scene of him explaining why he, the hangman, is the only thing different. And when he pulls that cord and her neck snaps, he will feel no emotion. Yep. I will be a blank slate, as it were. I mean, he's just so eloquent in yeah. all his stupid fucking belaboring, like you say. <laughs> yeah. But that's a, that's a Tarantino yes, scene. Okay. It's a five-minute fucking monologue yeah. and, and then people react to someone getting their head blown off or something it, right exactly it, it, the the vulgarity is more what he's discussing oh not God. the images displayed you it's know? you know it's been a pretty it's been a pretty different scene in cinema and i haven't watched an old tarantino film in a while the use of the n-word is so prolific oh, that i just forgot God. i just forget oh <laughs> and, my god and, yeah. and, and and i'm i'm taken aback where i wasn't watching Pulp Fiction in 1998, you know yeah. what I mean? Whereas now in 2021, I'm sitting there on the couch and I'm like, oh, damn, I forgot we're doing hard R here. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude. Oh, my God. Uh, have you seen <laughs> Django Unchained? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Because that one but, might make you uncomfortable. But, again, not in, not like in the last four years. So I'm not prepped for that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, uh, oh, it's, it's for sure. Like, I'll watch some certain stuff, like watching a lot of the boondocks and I'm Arigato. like, I'm like, oh man, I hope I don't like just get this in my head. Jesus, watching the Boondocks with Trish. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm I'm waiting for our transcript from Alexa to like spit out. Like... <laughs> oh god. Um. Da, 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 da. Let's see. 
Trish gets me sometimes where I'm like, oh, baby. Oh, yeah. What did you just say to me? Oh. <laughs> She's allowed. Oh, yeah. Uh, 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 That's uh, fucking great. But, I mean, can dude. Can I go in here? <laughs> that, uh, damn. We, oh, this is where this is uh, where we live upstairs. How do we, we got over here. Wyatt Russell, that was it. I'm like, how the fuck did we get from fucking Tangent. Marvel? To... We haven't even taken a call. No, we. Yeah, you're right. Oh we my haven't. god, or a break. Let's take a break. Okay. And then we'll come back. Holy shit! Yeah, we've been going for 50 minutes. We'll having come fun. back with a call. Guys. Brb is we. Be right back. Don't go anywhere. Uh. Oh yeah. Here's some occult. Keep your cups full and your chalice cold. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Happy to be back. Mm. Mm, boy, I love you so. Never, never, never gonna let you go. You know it. <laughs> Brian, who is our Discord caller you know what? of the week? We're gonna talk to How's Annie. How's Annie? Because they're, they're <sighs> ready. They're not muted or deafened, that so they're always, ready to go. Mm, that always just makes me think the username's great. Oh, makes yeah, me, oh, think, yeah. of, makes me Yo, think of that finale. How's Annie? What's up, Annie? Annie, are you okay? Package in the mail not too long after uh, last time I called and got those pins. Oh, in that's oh, right. We sent you some shit. How'd you like them, How's Annie? Love them. I love my uh, uh, electric energy Pokemon card I received as well. Okay, oh, glad okay. you got that. Glad you got the electric. Uh, Hell yeah. <laughs> from, from my uh, collection there. Uh, as well as the Rockin' Pins. <laughs> Thank you guys uh, for supporting Rockin' Pins. You can find our homie out there on Instagram and Twitter at R-O-C-K-I-N-P-I-N-Z. Uh, a lot of new stuff with the Fleischer Studios that he's been doing. Cartoony shit. Oh, yeah. We're going to do a DJ stream coming up here soon. Ooh, I like that. Where we're going to be doing that on the Rockin' Pins Twitch. They, If you guys are on Twitch, obviously, uh, Rockin' Pins just started an account a couple weeks ago. They've been streaming a lot of cartoons there. You can follow them at that same name. But I'm glad you got those, and I'm glad you appreciate them. Glad you like them. Oh, yeah. Many. Got them adorning various fabrics. Cross, cross the bolt. That's good. I'm such a collector. I put all my pins like in one spot, but I don't wear any of them because I'm too afraid of losing them. <laughs> I mean, for the most part, you're not wrong. I'm, I'm the I same wear way. one. You I don't... I always have a Bauhaus pin yeah. from Mauricio. That's the wrong camera. 
that uh, I keep on my patch here. Which is which is always glued on my shorts. To your patch, huh? Well, it's it's backed by Velcro, so uh, yeah, it can't come off. Exactly. It's it's, re it's doubly reinforced. It, it would have to like clip on something and break for it to come off, basically. On right? my fanny pack, I have a nine inch nails one too. Yeah, that's me. that's the other one that I know. Uh, yeah, but that one's also fastened with Allen. You can get little backings for your pins that have an Allen wrench set screw. Oh, like. The backing goes over it, and then there's a set screw in the side. It's huh. a tiny Allen key, and and that'll keep that fucker on forever. But it makes them, like, kind of long. That's cool. Sean wears them in his hat all the time. I don't understand how you do that, because I think the thing would poke my temple. It, it doesn't, because that part of the brim sits outside. But, uh, you know, I, I've, uh, I don't it's like... only right here. I don't like, oh, yeah. I don't like putting them there, because, uh, because of the same reason. Where I, where I normally put mine is um, I have one Padres pin on the back of one of my hats. On the it's back. A, yeah, it's a fitted hat, so it's right there. Oh, okay. So it yeah, doesn't yeah. actually, it's above where the fucking band is. But I really, yeah, I'm the same thing. Like, most of my pins that I like, I, uh, I don't want to lose. Like, I have a couple rocking pins of George Carlin that uh, Mauricio gave me. Oh, yeah. Most of my pins go on former lanyards from uh, cons, or I have a couple, like, I have the Flintmore Theater pin on my backpack, and a couple of other pins that I got. Uh, uh, we got those, remember those little, like, game cover, PlayStation cover pins that we got a yes. while ago. Yes, yeah, yeah, I, I got a Resident the, Evil one, I think. Yeah, the SmackDown one I put on my on my uh, backpack. Oops, why did I drink green tea? Uh, you're thirsty. I didn't mean to do that. But I'm hey, just, phone I'm caller. Just mashing buttons. Where do you put your pins? Annie, how's Annie? You know, various fabrics across the board. I got some on my... Uh, you do jackets? You know. Like jacket collars? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Oh yeah, jacket collars, sweatshirt cuffs on those sweatshirt. back pouches and some some bags. What's you know down by the cuff? sleeve? Oh really? Like on the yeah, arm? Yeah, no, you can you can fit them in there. You can fit them in there oh, every now and then. I'd have to try that out. That's a good idea. But hey man. But uh, no, I'm glad to see you playing Yakuza Seven. Glad to see you guys. Look at that light in the energy eyes. Is it good? I love yeah. it, man. I, yeah, these guys uh, keep making great games. R Rogo Uki Studio. How do you fucking pronounce it? What is it? Rio Rio Ga Gotoku. Gotoku. Rio which is, Ga Gotoku. Which is just what the games are called in Japan. Oh, Yakuza games? Yeah, they're no, not think... called Yakuza games. They're called Rio Ga Gotoku. Which means? I don't know what it means. Huh. I think it means like something open house or something. The family. I don't know. I, I looked it up before. Does it mean like a dragon? Okay, it means like a dragon. Oh, so the, cha so that studio has always been called like a dragon studio. Yeah. So again, that that's another part of the wow. layering of, of this one being called oh. like a dragon. So it's like a dragon imitating itself and like a dragon imitating Dragon Quest. Yeah. It's like a dragon, and then oh, he's God. the character is imitating his favorite yakuza, the dragon of Dojima, Kiryu. So In he way, yeah. is like a dragon. So it's just, that's the fucking humor of this studio. If this franchise Incredible. keeps going, do you think Kiryu and Ichiban will ever meet up? I hope so. Oh, absolutely. I, I They're mean, there's definitely no going to meet up one of these days. You know, I, I want to, I kind of want to replay Judgment because I played Judgment first. And I, and I wonder if I ran into Kiryu without noticing. You know, like if I did something and crossed paths with him and not and didn't notice because I... I just wasn't familiar with the characters. Oh, this guy's a knight of the cast. Oh, and he's a level 14. This guy could fuck my day up. Yeah, well, he's also a drunken master, so you better got that garbage lid. You watch out. Yeah, he's got a shield. You uh, deep into the game there? I'm okay. about actually like an hour, an hour to an hour 45 behind you. Behind really? me? Okay. So well, I'm not doing any story today, so no spoilers. I'm not too worried. I, okay. I'm, I got my apartment set up. I think we're probably on the same story beat. Uh, approximately, so I'm not too concerned. But yeah, this studio blows me away with how well they can open a game. I've only played Yakuza 0 and this one, and both times, man, I was just blown yeah. away by the opening. Um, yeah, just it hooks you instantly. Yeah. With if, its uh, the direction and writing to it. If you follow just the story in this game, it's like it's like a fucking, like Garrett said, it's like a soap opera. It's a, it's a telenovela. It's so captivating and fun. And it is a real casual, I will say, like, it's, there, I say casual, and it's not a bad thing. So 
Sometimes I want a game where I can sit back and like be entertained without having to like worry about quick time events. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, exactly. It, because the story lasts like, okay, I'm gonna watch a couple episodes of TV. Oh, no, no, no. I'm gonna play some Yakuza for an hour. And I'll only get through a couple little parts of the story because it is drawn out. Yeah, so, and so the way that I normally play it is because I like to play during the weeks and that's why I love, and I think they know this, that's why I love Yakuza games because of their pacing. They give you a story event. Who's mad? And you get fucking roped into the story, you get you get excited, then they finally let you go. When the story starts, you're gonna be locked in for like 30 minutes. Like they, people complain about cutscenes in Kojima games, they are not nearly as frequent <laughs> no, or no. as long as cutscenes in Yakuza games. Suck my oh, dick no. anyone who wants to complain. <laughs> yeah. Because that, and they're not bad, again, they're fun. But like, but these... it's it's something I gotta be in the mood for. Like, yes. if I wanna run around and play like Overwatch or some shit, I don't play Overwatch. But yeah, you know, a first-person shooter, like, yeah, 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 I'm not gonna get my uh, clicky action fix from playing a Yakuza game. So, and that's that's where uh, that's where the side missions help to do that. So, sure. So oh, the, the little mini games. Yeah. So my so the way that I play Yakuza games, my cycle, uh, as Frank likes to say, uh, which I think is a great way to describe it, because these games kind of have a routine um i'll get to that end of the story mission and then whatever the next new objective is i'll avoid entirely i look for all the side missions all the green uh, yeah. dialogue boxes on on the street and i just go and i attack those i look for little locker uh keys i look for find like little things to find all over the map once i clear all of those then i go to the next story mission which is how i played final fantasy 7 that's how i yeah. play most rpgs um, I, I really do like to clear out, but that's a lot of what slows me down in finishing the game. Exactly. So that's why it works for me because what we were talking about, oh, I just want to run around and do little 10 to 15 minute spurts of gaming. That's where that makes it so much better. I'll, so for me, like a chapter will end up taking me, a, a Yakuza game, if I play it, sit down and I play it like every week, on average, it'll be like a chapter a week because that's how I do it. Throughout the week, I'll do little five to 10 minute sessions where I end up playing like two or three hours instead of watching some bullshit TV show. Yeah. But I'm doing all the side mission stuff that I can stop and walk away from at any moment. You know what I mean? Rather than doing the big story thing. And then on the weekend, I sit down with the story mission thing when I have the time and I can sit down and give it that full attention to not have to worry like, oh fuck, is this cutscene? Yeah, I gotta go for yeah. dinner. I got a, a work thing. That's kind of why I only play video games on the weekends, yeah. aside from the PPS anymore. Yeah, I mean, my, my days are, we're, they're like twelve to ten hour days most of the time. Yeah. So, Me too. so that's just that's just where I'm at right now. But maybe it won't be the case for long. Yeah. I. Don't I... Know. I think you're right. I think it's, you know, and again, like, I do make extra time. Like like I said, at the end of the night, I would much rather play a game that's kind of light and fun than put on a, for me, because what ends up happening is I either put on a show and I fall asleep because I'm so fucking tired, or I put on a show and I end up on my phone, like, catching up on stupid social media shit that I don't actually want to catch up on. I'm like, yeah. oh, I'd much rather just play a video game. I have, we, you know, we always talk about not having enough time to get to some of these games that we bought. And I'm like, oh, well, I'll pop in for like 15 or 20 minutes into this and it captivates me for a few hours, good. And if not, eventually I'll just watch it. But that's, you know, that again, that's my cycle. Yeah, I'm living with my girl, so it's kind of like we will split up, play two games in different rooms. Sometimes we'll like, ah, I'm gonna watch the same thing. Most of the time. I mean, yeah. I like spending time with her. So if she's like, fuck it, I'm going to bed early. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna watch a movie. I'm like, oh, what movie? Yeah. Yeah. We talking cuddling? Is that off the table? <laughs> Typically? It's never off the table. It's always off the table with her, Brian. Damn it. <laughs> but hey, how's Andy? That's probably not all you called for. What else is, uh, what else do you want to get in, get in while you're uh, on the, on the phone with us? Well, this was an excellent segue into sort of what I was going to ask you guys about. I've been sure. watching the Oscars. Well, I didn't watch the Oscars. I was yeah. watching the news about the Oscars I coming heard out. I it was on. And it That's sort of just made me realize, yeah, you know, and yeah, I heard awards were going out. I looked at the list, and I, I was, was a, blown away by how little. I heard there was uh, a there bling was, like, like just, Chadwick Boseman NFT. <laughs> I don't even know what anything about that. Fuck? That might have been the, the worst tasteless thing I've ever seen. In all the gift bags or something, there was an NFT of 
uh, deceased actor uh, who played Black Panther. Why do I feel like every year the Oscar fucks up and every year people keep watching it? That was just the weirdest, like, dumb shittest thing I saw about okay. it. But, but, uh, but, yeah, you were following the news, Annie. <laughs> yeah, Did yeah. Did you see that NFT? Um, <laughs> and that I just made me realize how... Uh, I, I, I just looked it up. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's embarrassing. Man. That's, so that's, so that's bad. offensive. So bad. <laughs> like, it's, I, I oh, man. Say, so, uh, um, Oscar NFT? Yeah. yeah. But let, oh my God. let us, uh, before we show the screen, <laughs> pull up a big screenshot of it, and we'll get there in a sec, but... But what did you want to say about that? About the uh, Oscars? Uh, well, well nothing about the NFT. I, I didn't no. know about it till just now. But just that the, the lack of interest in the Oscars. I feel like the Oscars is dead. Like oh, this might have been the like the, the the last nail in the coffin for it. Just no. The, like like the they the movie ratings. pool, the awards pool. It reminded me of like like Can, you know, like the Can <laughs> Film Festival yeah. in terms of just like. Like I like I'd never heard of half this shit. The <laughs> like, uh, well, just, it was uh, a bad year for film. Oh my god! It was definitely affected uh, yeah, by the god. pandemic. But but for real though, like uh, I think that yeah, like last year there were pretty low views. This year it was even lower, and the streams of the game developer or the the game awards. You know Jeff Keighley's game awards. So yeah. What? Those are fucking like way bigger than these fucking uh, oh, yeah. these numbers for who's tuning into this movie shit. And that shit felt like a slap together as it yeah. could be last minute in the middle of a fucking pandemic, and it still had better. It? The the game the game awards. Yes, I'm, I'm oh, agreeing oh. with your point of the game no, awards. No, no. I always watch the game awards. Yeah, me too. I didn't feel like it was slapped together. Well, no, I mean in terms of they had to adjust. They still did their award show in you know last year for the game awards and they and they had to do not i mean not slap together but they had to rearrange everything so fast you know uh, that's that's what i mean in their in their pivot to adjust for um the pandemic it seemed like they had a much more compelling artistically based focused on the community and the game like the game's essence more so than the oscars have been for the last i don't know 10 years 15 years mm -hmm. yeah but, I mean, I feel like, uh, how's Annie to kind of say, go to what you're saying? Like, it'll never fully go away because it still has way too many eyes. And for fuck's sake, we're talking about it and it already happened. So clearly, mm -hmm. it's, it's got big enough presence that it's never going to go away. But I mean, yeah, there's still going to be movies. And next year, they'll, they'll have theaters open and people yeah. will actually go to see these movies. And it won't be a bunch of shit that no one really saw. But I feel like uh, as I got older, there's a bunch of shit in the last year or the year before that that I never saw or didn't care about. Yeah. I liked uh, Sound of Metal, but that's about all I knew from this year's Oscars. Last year, I liked Parasite. Yeah. But that's also about all I knew or all I can think of. Yeah. Well, also, there's like there's a, this kind of stigma around the Oscars of a damned if you do, damned if you don't thing. Like we we put them in that position, we as the as the culture around it, I should say, we put them in a position where they can't do anything. Anything that they're gonna do, they're gonna be scrutinized for for not noticing one other small detail, or or you know what I'm saying, like. Rather than trying to see what this fucking thing is, which is just this fucking award show to promote different movies that you should go check out and honor the performances and the people who work within sure, it, yeah. people think of it as this, like, industry-setting, uh, you know, like, fucking taste-making establishment, which it's not. It's just one organization that gives out awards for, for motion picture related categories the golden globes do that the sag does that you know like there's a bunch of different awards that we don't even talk about we just focus on this one well the oscars the most publicized. Are the big one yeah. yeah it's the most publicized academy awards right so it's like i think the main thing is we need to remember that the academy awards are no longer the be all end all tastemaker but it's a great way to learn about new movies that you wouldn't have seen otherwise yeah, there is that thing where when the Academy Awards come out and you see what's all nominated, then you go, oh, they must be the cream of the crop, so let me go check those out. Yeah, I mean, it's the same thing as a Michelin rating. If you guys don't know what a Michelin yeah. rating is... I, I do. You do, and most people do, but you know that it's Michelin tires who created that rating. Yeah, I know. Um, but there's, uh, you know, there, it's not going away, but it's no. definitely not something I care about. But also, it's not for me, you know? Exactly. I'm online yeah. and That's I'm a statistic, little more. Uh... Go ahead. 
Uh, that statistic you mentioned, but the like it was almost uh, exactly in time with the Oscars losing interest, the Game Awards gained interest, like yeah. proportionately. Where it's like now they're now they're taking taking the viewers. And you just ripped it into the Matrix. Fra oh, fraction right. of this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh <laughs> uh, no. Hold on, maybe it started doing that when you first called, but it corrected itself. But um, yeah, I see what you're saying. You know, like we're we're. It'll always be around, but they got to start transitioning to a different way of presenting it. Yeah. And something they, more interesting and And even just put it on YouTube. Yeah. Well, I, I heard yeah, that, that they don't even run it on any online platform. That they, too. Know. That They need to step into the 21st century. Well, somebody said that in the chat, and I just went, oh, well, then that's their biggest problem. They're not putting it on in front of the widest audiences anymore, and so their relevance is going completely down. Yeah. Yeah. So you still you hear about the Oscars, but you know what? Like, when do I catch it? Why do I give a fuck? And that was kind of what happened this year, I think, as well, because there were no big movies that came out. You know, nobody was thinking about movies, and they still did the Oscars because movies still came out. And I feel like everybody went, "Oh, the Oscars, right?" And then, you know. But I agree with you. Guys. Yeah, I I I find it very interesting. Uh, you know that. There's this shift in media, you know, from traditional television, cable to, you know, the way it works online. And that's why I'm not very interested in, like, securing... Like, I think when I was younger, I always thought, like, how fucking cool would it be to, like, take this entertainment career into something where, like, I have a... Sh like, I'm on a show or, like, a movie. But I've rethought that at this point and it's like no dude you're already in the next medium medium is the message you're already mm -hmm. extremely active online keep putting your focus and your energy into that yes and that's something where i have a 100 percent control of it too yep i mean the best example is look at um orson wells they were a huge radio Oh yeah, they did about anything you could do, everything, and renovated fucking how radio was done. And then they went, oh, motion pictures are the next thing, and made fucking Citizen Kane and a bunch of other movies. And this guy's still moved, alive. Oh, you gotta kick his butt. And 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 moved on with it, grew up with it. Uh, I think I think uh, fucking Steve Martin says it too. It's it's better to be on the front of something new than holding on to something that's dying. Yes, man. And exactly. That's a, so good of a quote. Like I I, I butchered it. I, uh, there's he says it a little bit more eloquently. No, but you said it just fine. I made total sense to me. Yeah. So so I mean. That's the that's the idea. Like, I'm not saying that TV is ever going to go away, but it's going to be there. So you need to factor it in if you want to consider that audience. Actually, Vodsel in the chat said something pretty perfect, which maybe the reason that they keep it on terrestrial television is because the people who watch television is still their target audience. That's what I'm saying. It, it's for people in their 60s. Yeah. It's not for you and me. It's not for people who, who like yourself, house Annie, know how to look online and find movies oh, and I'll things find they out, want to watch. I'll find out what one on Twitter and I won't have to sit through a fucking Chadwick Boseman NFT fucking tribute. Yeah. Can we see a fucking <laughs> screenshot of that, oh, by the yeah. way? Oh, yeah. Did you take it down? No, I, I yeah. <laughs> I don't know what the fucking story was. Apparently, the 3D scan of the actor wasn't done. Uh, <laughs> I, I think they... I mean, it looks enough like him. It's I think just... they stole the art, is what I'm saying. I think they stole the 3D scan oh. to make this as well. They tried to buy it. From what I saw, they tried to buy it. Yeah, Randy Rose is backing me up. They tried to buy it from the artist. They contacted the artist. The artist said, fuck off. And they used it anyway? And they used the scan anyway to make this NFT. Now, I don't know if everyone got the NFT in their gift bags or if it was just like one per... Isn't an NFT one thing? I don't know how it fucking works. <laughs> I think like they were allowed to bid on it or yeah. something. Like, I, it, regardless, like... Did they ask the family? Did his family sign off on this? Like, oh, fuck. Oh, my God. I mean, the family showed up to the Oscars to, like, uh, to receive the award they assumed he was going to get. And then they gave it to fucking, they gave it to that corpse, Andy, uh, whatever his name is, Anthony Hopkins. <laughs> like, 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 what? What are they thinking? I don't know, man. Wait, who, who was, well, uh, what was Chadwick Boseman nominated for? He was nominated for... For, no, not for Black Panther. No, that didn't come out they last never do superhero movies either. What was he nominated for? Comedy, comic books, and... Well, I mean, clearly, if we porn. can't think of it. Always get shafted. <laughs> oh, that jazz movie. 
They never give out best double anal at. Uh, no, th that's a different. The one. Academy Awards. I know you got to go to ABN for that one. Yeah. See, and they're online. Marini, Marini's black bottom. Is that the last thing he shot? Is that really what he was? Uh, I mean, or the last thing to just be released? I think that might. A lot of times, stuff for. that yeah. didn't get put out uh, when an actor dies then will get pulled off the shelf like oh we shot this back in 2018 starring Chadwick all right let's just let's find a distributor now because it's he's like you know relevant and hot and he just died so they're like yes anything yeah uh, it's weird how all industries are kind of vulturous when it comes down to the one goal is uh, make some dollars oh maybe. yeah Oh. Is there anyone jacking off to this right now? Make that fucking Skrilla. Well, he did win the Golden Globe for, for that performance, but yeah, that's eh, interesting. What was the movie? I've never Ma heard of it. Ma Rainey's Black Bottom? I've never heard of that, but okay. Me neither. <laughs> I mean, I hadn't heard of Sound of Metal until someone suggested it too, so if someone suggests Ma Rainey's Black Bottom... Oh, like Ma Rainey? Like her ass? Like her black ass? What is this talking about? I don't know, man. I really have never... Ma Rainey? Like, the, like yeah. you, you're watching the trailer and there's a woman dancing up on the stage. Go ahead and play that. It's, about a, it's about a blues singer, I guess. And her black ass. This is not just another streaming app. <laughs> Uh, uh, and you're not in the muted tab yeah. anyway. I thought you were in uh, tw uh, the other one. Yeah, yeah. But, uh... I don't know, man. There's too many movies and too many shows to go check out everything on that Oscar list. I saw the list and I really was only like, yeah, I saw Sound of Metal and nothing else sounds that appealing. I was interested in this Synchronic movie right. that just came out on Netflix. Mm -hmm. yeah. A couple of our friends, Stevie B and Rodrigo, were telling me I'd like it. And I do. And it's starring the actor who plays Falcon. I don't know who that guy is. Anthony Mackie? Yeah, sure. If that's his name. Yeah. I, I cannot remember actors' names. If they were in anything in the 90s, it's, it's like embedded in my brain. But <laughs> past that, I don't have a like. Who's the red haired guy in Prophecy? Oh, er, uh. I'll get it in a sec. It's Eric. It's Eric something. He's also in Pulp Fiction as the drug yeah, dealer. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's a drug dealer. And he's in The Mask uh, with starring Cher. Yeah. And all the Hells Angels. Starring Cher. Eric Wait, The Mask? Stoltz. Eric Stoltz. Let's see if you're right. Holy shit. It's a <laughs> I picked the most obscure actor I could think of. For you. Off the well, no, just that. <laughs> no, I know, but like. you would know? To me, I'm like, oh, that's Eric Stoltz. He's in this, he's in this, he's in. You know what I mean? Well, it's that, the 90s. Got me locked. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's, a, <laughs> it's an actor that you would sure. know, but you wouldn't know the name of. I like this game. Yeah. Who, uh, can you keep going? I, I can try. Yeah, what's the name? Well, what fuck? What's the name of the actor who plays the main villain in, uh, in, in The Crow? Oh, ooh, this is. Brian, I need to know this because I, just I watched love it. I love this actor. He's also the villain in He's such a good villain. No, he's not the villain. He's the ship captain in Alien Resurrection. Oh yeah. He, he's he, so slick and European. He always plays a fucking bad guy. Oh, I don't know I don't know his name though. I've never learned his name. Okay. What is it? Michael Michael Wincott. Yes. Did I just do an attack on him? Maybe. I'm, I'm taking my sweet time. We beat him. See, because you knew you. Uh, I'm Michael Massey, is it? Uh oh, wait. That's a different guy. No, that's Fun Boy. That's that's the other Fun guy. Boy. That's the first. That's guy the guy goes. who shot him. Smokes right? and road beers now. Yeah, the 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 head do the head guy <laughs> is top dollar. Who people are saying? I think that was also was he also Zed? Michael Wincott. Yeah. Uh. People are calling Zed in the chat. Yeah. Zed's dead. Zed's dead, baby. Mm -hmm. Zed's dead. I thought he, he was might he Zed? be. He might be Zed. I'm trying to find it here. Cause I I remember a different guy. Or ninety. Wait. No. Zed calls over the cop. That's right. Yeah. He is Zed, and I'm thinking of the cop's face that comes over to bring out the gimp. Holy shit. Mm. It's been a while since I saw that, but damn. Do you uh, you got one there? How's Annie? A gimp. No, no. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, bring your gimp yeah, out. Yeah, bring the gimp out. Put him on the phone. We want to talk to your gimp. <laughs> you know, but you got to be careful. He's, he's a little talk. tied up right now. A lot of gimps pass away on accident from playing with them too hard. Really? Yeah. And uh, there's, uh, I know a uh, comedian I really like to follow, Duncan Trussell. Oh, yeah. He, he gives a lot of good gimp tips, how to keep your gimp clean, how to keep your gimp healthy, you know, what to feed your gimp, what not to feed your gimp. Yeah. It's like a gremlin. You can't feed them after midnight. Right. <laughs> or they turn into a, a power top. You don't want that. I'm oh. so fucking happy. Um, <laughs> Sean would be. <laughs> I'm finally out of this fight that was quite a challenge. And I took about a half hour to do it. That's. Let's go heal up. We'll go back to our little. Well, hey, how's Andy? Do you have any parting words for us? Anything else you want to leave us with before we let you go? Yeah. Just, just, just that, that love and energy of a, of a fan, you know? Love you guys. Love what you do. Hey. Glad to see you still. I love you. Pumping out quality content. I wouldn't be able to do it without you. Hey, how's Andy? And uh, I would I would go f as far as to say you're more than a fan, you're a loyal viewer, and you're a pal. Thank you, Hazani. Thanks for being a pal. Thank you for taking me. Oh, Brian's got him. Drop him into the matrix. Hell oh, yeah! Thank Let's you. Let's see. I wanted to avoid these two dorks. Level 13, level 12, and level 12. Oh, we can take him. Oh, but we're like, oh fuck! I went into battle like half dead. This is what happens to me, and then I'll get killed. And uh, what, well, only one of your characters. You just oh, and as long as uh, Ichiban stays alive too, you're good. And he's at full. Yeah. He, I think he must have leveled up at that. Oh, good. Nanba got his health back. Yeah, I just did the power. Oh, damage. I see. I see. I didn't know that that gave you health. I thought I was in attack. <laughs> he's basically your magic. He's your mage. So oh. he does the flame breath. He does the pigeon attack. Okay. He does your healing spells. Um, he's your mage. The cop dude here is like your heavy, you know, your. I got gotcha. you. Soldier class. Like your tank. Your tank. That's what I was looking for. And he does. I haven't used reckless charge, but I do love the attack. Oh! 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 Plus damage. Dang! Yeah, this looks awesome. I do like there is the brawler event. Uh, you know, like the quick time if you hit perfect dodge. Yeah. Or if you do those little power extra damage attacks. There is some action involved in the type of, you know, turn base, which yeah. I, I like when Final Fantasy did that in 12 and other games would do that. Boom. I like a little bit of action mixed in and it's not mandatory. Yes. It, it's just, hey, it'll give you a bonus. Yeah, that that's always really cool. That was one of my favorite things about Super Mario, uh, what's it called? Super Mario. Super Paper RP. Mario. Oh, okay. I never played those. Yeah, the super, paper ones. Well, the Super Paper Mario one is the is more like a 2D platformer than any of the other ones. The other ones are more turn based and you know like what you're doing here. Yeah. But this one you get new encounters, but you jump like you do different attacks based on jumping on them and like shaking the controller. It's actually it's a blast. I love that game. It's one of my favorite uh, RPGs. Oh, these are maybe tiny. one day. I'll, maybe one day I'll play it. Paper Mario 2. You should play it on King Lord Brian. Yeah, right? yeah, that's what I mean. Like on, but I, I don't know if it's easy to get. I'm sure I can figure out a way to emulate it. Super Paper Ooh. Mario. Uh, well, I mean, I have a, I have a Wii U, so it should run on that, and then I can play it in 1080p. Uh, but is it a Wii game? It's a Wii game, yeah. But I don't know if you can buy it easily. Oh, you don't have your copy. Uh, no, I rented it from uh, from GameFly back in the day. Shit. But it's one of my favorite. RPGs on the on that on that system. Okay, cool. You can get it for like 15, 30 bucks. Well, oh, that's not bad. No, no, not bad at all. It's a great. Oh, why did I do that again? I guess it doesn't hurt me. I can do it as much as I want. Um. Wow. Super Paper Mario. Yeah, I might play that. I would love to. Dude, that would that uh, that game is so much fun. I put I put like 40 hours into that game. And I did as much as I, I think I did almost everything in that game and beat it. Wow. But I'd be down to play that on stream. That'd be a lot of fun. I want to find one more fight because this game is so automated. You can even put it, Brian, into like auto fight mode. Oh really? Watch this. If you hold down L2. Uh, be adaptive, take offensive, or prioritize healing. Oh! Or don't use skills, you know, like, whatever. But I'll just say, yo, be adaptive. And then uh, you just tap it to auto battles on them. I can set the controller down and they'll just fucking go. Uh, which brings us 
to the end of the show. See, I didn't need to hit it. Didn't hit it. Didn't hit it, so it don't matter. Oh! Hell yeah, you defeated him. The capitalist was punished. Clapped his booty. Thank you so much for tuning in today, guys. Hell yeah. Uh, we will bring you more video games next Wednesday and every Wednesday. Was there a 64-hour special? Oh. No special to Shit. speak of. Not this week, but tune in next time. We sure do love ya. We'll see you next time. Oh, my gimp is texting me. Hold on. Oh, yeah. Get to that. I hope all torches everybody. And no, it's not cause I'm mean. It's just that the insurance money is set up to all go to me. Yeah. When yeah. this complex was bought, the dumb doctor book simply would not use his name. Instead, it was me whose name's on the deed, and now it's time to get paid. Mark is his bitch. So very rich. I know that they won't raise that money. I can guarantee Cause even the best play in history Can still be brought down by me Someone might get shot with this gun I just bought Whatever it takes to succeed Yeah, yeah You think I'm insane But let me explain I'm motivated by my greed Mark is his bitch Marcus is rich Though Horatio's my friend I still want him dead That way I'll get some extra dough This insurance plan Puts cash in my hand And that's why this place has to go Marcus is rich I'm gonna have so much money It's gonna be awesome Marcus is rich. And then after that, I'm gonna steal a fire truck and have a fire truck of my own. Marcus is rich. And then I pick up all the ladies and say, What's up, please? Marcus is <laughs> rich. I got a fire you can put out in my pants. So I will be rich. I'm gonna my plane, it's gonna be rad. So, <laughs> so they'll be my bitch. Oh, this is gonna be the best day of my life. Marcus is rich. That plane is gonna fail. I'm gonna bring that shit down. Rich, 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 rich. Okay, let's get this shit going. I'm gonna be rich. <laughs>